Welcome back to yet another episode of this epic build. I'm on a mission to build an entire guitar, including hardware and pickups, with the only tools and materials sourced from local hardware stores. In this episode, we are making great progress. We are finishing up the fretboard and we are making a start on the body. So stay tuned until the end of this video if you want to find out how it all looks like. Alright, so off camera I got a little bit carried away with the fingerboard. I measured and cut the fret slot and I brought it down to its final width. So what's left to do today is actually radius the fretboard. Now for that I need a radius sanding block. I couldn't find one in town so I had to make my own radius block. I 3D printed a 12 inch radius block and put it on a piece of wood. So let's get to work. All right, so it is a new day and it's actually quite sunny outside. I got a fretboard radius yesterday and it looks very nice. And I also marked the position of it on the neck. I also cleaned up the channel a little bit with a dremel. So now the thrust rod fits very nicely inside. So what's left to do for now is cut the neck down to the final dimension. I drew some lines so I'm gonna get as close as I can to the lines and I'm gonna use this nice hand saw. Now the advantage of using a hand saw is that I have so much more control and I can get so much closer to the line than I could have done with a bandsaw probably. It is a bit slower, but it's not as slow as I imagined. Okay, so I have one side done. That didn't go very bad. It actually went quite quickly. So I'm gonna do the next side off camera and catch you back when I'm done. Okay, so the neck is now cut on both sides. It is looking pretty nice. And now I have to plane the sides down so that they are perpendicular to the face. Now, before gluing up the fretboard, the last thing we have to do is stain it. I can leave it like this, but I really want a black fretboard. Now, I could have gone and bought some black stain, but what I did instead 
was made a solution of iron acetate which is steel wool dissolved in vinegar for about one week now what this does when it comes in contact with the wood it chemically reacts with the tannins in wood and it chemically blackens it this process is called ebonizing what's good about this process is that it doesn't only stain the surface but it goes in the fibers of the wood which will make the color more durable now Again, this is not a stain, this is a chemical process that will happen instantly. So you'll see once I do it, the fretboard will instantly turn black. So let's get to it. So now I will let it dry for a little bit, let it react fully, then I will go with 180 grit sandpaper again and go with another coat. So it has dried up and I've sanded it very lightly. I'm gonna go for the second coat now and I will probably go for a third or fourth coat depending on how black it gets. Okay, so now it dried up. Now I'm seeing that it doesn't get as black as I want it to be. It is quite nice as it is, but yesterday I made a test on another piece of oak that I had from the neck and it looks so much nicer. So why this presumably happens is because this strip of oak isn't as high in tannins as the other one. Now what I've done is made some black tea, which is quite high in tannins. I can brush that over the fretboard and then let it dry, give it another coat of iron acetate and this would presumably make it even darker. Okay, now let the tea soak in and come back with a final coat of iron acetate and see how that reacts okay so we are now back for the final coat of iron acetate it is starting to look very nice i'm quite pleased with this i will show you how it looks after it dries up and we are back now with the fingerboard dried now one last thing is that rubbing it with some tissue brings out this nice dark shade on it. Right, now this looks very beautiful. It has a nice shine to it. And I'm sure that some oil or probably wax would bring out the color a little more and would also protect it from staining your fingers while playing. So the fingerboard is now ready to get glued up to the neck. But before that, I will start some work on the body sides. Okay, so we are back outside. Up to this point, we have the fingerboard radius and stained. We have the side of the body plain down, flat and perpendicular to the face. And all we have to do now is get some work started on the sides, on the wings of the body. I actually got two pieces of beach from the shop. From this piece of beach I can make both wings of the body. The problem is that it is a bit too thin. It's way thinner than the neck is. Now to solve that, I will glue some plywood on top of it before gluing it to the body. That will bring it up to the right thickness. Now following the same theme with building the guitar from the inside out, what adding a piece of plywood does is helping me carve out the electronics cavity before gluing up the plywood. Now I need to get one face, you guessed it, plane down. It seems that planing doesn't really stop anymore in this project. Get one side plane down, carve the cavity, and then I'm gonna go and glue up the plywood on top of this.
Okay, so I planed down the other side as well. I'm gonna go inside now, cut this out with a hacksaw, the rasp, bring it up to the line and blow up the plywood on top of it. And we are now back with a voiceover because that particular day was too windy to record any audio. So what we have here is the plywood glued up to the beach. I don't really know what plywood this is but it does look quite nice, it has this red shade to it. So if you have any idea about what type of veneer that is, please let me know. But here you can see the electronics cavity already in place because we carved it out before gluing the plywood onto the beach. What I need to do now is to take the saw and get the body sides cut out and cleaned up. Now again this saw is just amazing, I can get really precise and close to the line. In terms of speed, this thing just eats through the wood after you get the hang of it. And even though these clips are sped up, the whole cutting of the body didn't effectively take longer than half an hour overall. And here you can see how precise I managed to get with this saw. It is now just a matter of going over the edges with the rasp, getting them to the final dimension and getting them fair and square to the face. With this final step we are now very close to gluing up the sides to the neck. Before that however I will have to carve out the pickup cavity in the neck. That way we can glue up the sides and then not need any additional routing after they are glued together. And with that bit of touching up, it's time to wrap up this video. Oh, you want to see how the body size look attached to the neck? Well, here it is. This is still temporary, there's still a lot of work to be done on this, but I am extremely pleased with how this looks by now. Now at this point, most of the hard work is already finished. I could probably just glue everything up, throw some off the shelf hardware and pickups in it and it would be a guitar. But this is where the fun begins. Next week I'm gonna make a start on the DIY bridge and tuners and it will be quite the journey. And as always, if you want to stay tuned to this build, please subscribe to this channel, like the video if you liked it. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.